Can um, everyone turn to a male figure in the room and say, thanks for being a good dad? Does everybody just do that really, really, really quick? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, um, you're g hold on while I say what I'm going to say, um, because I'm not discounting women, okay? Because I have one. In fact, I have a lot of them. I would lose. <laughs> not, I don't mean that in an appropriate, I have daughters and one wife and no girlfriends. <laughs> Make that clear. I, um, I don't think that there is a more challenging or difficult job than to be a dad. I was talking with Pastor Jane um, just before coming out here. She was having some fatherly advice for me. And, uh, and uh, a few of the things that you have to understand, you know, we have God the Father, we have God the Son, and we have God the Holy Spirit, right? What I love about Holy Spirit is he's stinking fun. Yes. It just gets ruckus when he's around. It's just like, you know, woo, people are dancing, ah! He's the comforter, he's the nurturer, he's the friend. But we got this picture, and even Jesus, like, yo, bro. It's like he's our brother, you know, it's like, you know, he's like, I, I've always been, but father has always been seemingly a little distant. Not, on, not because of him, but because of my understanding of his role. Does that make sense so far? So, stay. so so a mom, you know, every stinking football player that you see on TV, who do they say hi to? It's always mom. Hi, mom. Hello. <laughs> Mother's Day. Everybody changes their plans to be home for Mother's Day. Oh, it was Father's Day last week? Sorry, I missed it, Dad. It's like, it is crazy. But I have a theory. Just stay with me. Out there, we have a, we're building a building. And, and by the way, thank you, because we have some amazing reports I'm going to share with you in just a minute um, from, the, from the town and from our bank. Um, I'm going to share with you in just a minute. But that building out there, you know what? No one ever comes up and says, that place has the best foundation ever. They talk about the trim, and they talk about the windows, and they talk about the stuff you can see. But they don't talk about what's holding it all up and holding it all together. It's just, and the thought, see, it's this, this thing, there's this thing that we're lacking in our culture, and, and the good news is, is that our culture has been destroyed for a lack of fathers, and the reason that's good news is because all that has to happen is dads to come back home. Everything gets fixed. Everything gets fixed. There's something of the, of, even when you look at the Godhead, there's something reserved for God the Father. There's something that's reserved for God the Father that the Son was willing to be okay with and that the Holy Spirit is intentional in getting us into that place of entering into the Father's presence, being around that throne, being, being close in proximity to the Father. There's something reserved for the Father. So I just want to really, I want to love on, challenge, celebrate fathers today. Now with that said, with that said, it is very unfortunate, moms, that you've had to be great moms and great dads. And, 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 I'm, and I'm sorry that you have had to be 
subjected to the things as a mom or as a woman that you should never have been subjected to because a father stepped out of his place of being a covering and a protection and a source and a resource to you that, that you were not meant to do by yourself. See, a, a lot of people think that independence is our battle cry. It's not. It's interdependence that's our battle cry. We actually have to learn how to really grow. And, and listen, we got to learn to be fully dependent on one another. But any good marriage knows that you can't worry about taking care of your needs and him worrying about taking his, care of his needs because no one's needs are ever going to get met because we're meant to take care of one another's needs. Yes? So why are fathers absent? I'd like to propose to you there's two schools of thought on this. One is it's a, a, a very extremely difficult job to do. And two is they can't give what they don't have. And if you have not experienced a father, then you can't be the father that you, if you don't have something to give. Now, with that said, with that said, there are amazing fathers that are being amazing fathers that are young fathers that never had a good father. Yeah. How did that happen? Why? Because we all have a good father. <laughs> and so I thought if we're going to talk about fatherhood today, let's look at the best, not only the best father of the year, but the best father ever. Now here's the good news. I look just like him. And so do you. And this is not a gender specific message today, even though I will, I will say, I will say that, that I am designed, I am designed to be a dad. Yes. Lisa's designed to be a mom. Yes. Together, we're godly parents. Yes. She was never meant, listen, I'm telling you right now, Levi would roll her over if I wasn't around. Not because, well, well, he would try. She's got ninja skills, so I'm not sure, but... But, but, but the, re the reality is, is that there's the, the strength that comes from a father and a mother in a home is exactly what the kids, what a family needs. It's the same. What's true in the natural is true in the spiritual. That's why we need, you need to have a relationship, not just with Holy Spirit, not just with the Son, and not just with God the Father. You need a relationship, a personal relationship with all three. And some of us have been okay with the salvation message of Jesus that he's the door into the kingdom, but I want to propose to you that we're meant to experience all of the kingdom. And all of the kingdom cannot be experienced except for the fact of the love of the Father being demonstrated to us, in us, and through us. Fathers are just so important. We're losing a generation not because of the generation. We're losing a generation because the fathers of that generation were attacked a long time ago and we're beaten down a long time ago, and we've, we've had everything, everything, everything the enemy has tried to do was to take the fathers out, because he knew if he can take the fathers out, it's no problem getting rid of the kids. This attack started a long time ago. We are living currently in the most fatherless time ever in history outside of wartime. There are more fathers absent right now, currently in history, right now, than there's ever been, except for during wartime when, when they have died by, by, because of death or being absent because of war. Right now we're in peacetime, and, and no other time in history has there been a lack of fathers than right now. Do you think that's accidental? How devastating is it when a, the person who's supposed to be the covering for the home steps out of his home and leaves his whole family exposed? It affects the kids, it affects the grandkids, it affects, it, affects, it affects history. That's how significant this is. Ma, dads, listen, when Banning Leafshire said it in his book, and, and I mentioned it last week, where are the fathers? Here's the deal. Fathers have forget, forgotten who they are, and they've got to remember who they are so that they can be who they are. That's it. All the problems... Every single problem in culture will be answered in this thing. How do I know? Because the U.S. Census Department told me so. No, the Bible actually told me so. But read, do you guys get this this morning? Did you get these handed out when you came in? Um, the father absence crisis in America. There is a crisis in America right now, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, 
19.7 million children, more than one in four, live without a father in the home. Consequently, there is a father factor in nearly all of the uh, societal ills facing America today. Research so shows that when a child is raised in a father-absent home, he or she is affected in the following ways. Four times greater risk of poverty, seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teen, more likely to have behavioral problems, more likely to face abuse and neglect, 2% greater risk of infant mortality, more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol, more likely to go to prison, two times more likely to suffer obesity, more likely to commit crime, two times more likely to drop out of school. I'd like to propose to you that family becomes unhealthy body, soul, and spirit when fathers leave. I'd like to propose to you that fathers have left and are still in the home. These stats are just the ones that aren't in the home physically. I'd like to propose there's been a whole lot of dads that have checked out of their responsibility while still living in the home. And you can... Mm. Nothing makes me want to beat up anybody more than that. Children didn't make the choice to not have a dad. Dads, it's hard. Dads, it's lonely. Dads, sometimes it's not thankful. People aren't thankful. Kids aren't thankful. The culture's not thankful. It's okay. Thankfulness wasn't part of the job description that you were going to receive as a dad. How do I know? I look at God the Father's life. And what is the first thing that we usually do with God the Father? We blame him. It's not an easy role. However, if it was easy, anyone would do it. However, you and I, what seems impossible for man is actually possible for God. So how many of you today would like to actually learn what it means to be a great father Oh, and then learn how you can actually start to be that. All right, the rest of you can go home. Um, but I think if you're going to be something, you probably ought to know what that something looks like. And so we're going to look at we're going to look at the best father today. So before we do, we're going to look at the just the cutest wife anybody ever had. I oh yeah yeah not anybody ever had just me. So. Lisa, will you come? We're going we're gonna to invite you all today. Take out your phones. Take out, all of you, take out your phones. That's right. Take out your phones. You're allowed to take out your, that's right. Take out your phones in church. What we're going to do is our, our whole community today is going to be our social media campaign specialist. How many know that you, because I want to share the good news, but I want, it, I want it to be out there. How many know that every one of you have friends? If you don't have friends, just look at your Facebook. You know you have friends. So and what we're going to do is Lisa's going to show you how to share what we're doing here live on your Facebook, and it's going to go viral today. Yeah. <clears throat> share the good news. Well, you guys, can you smile? You're on candid camera, would you, for Pete's sake? All right, go ahead, Lisa. Okay, just before I do this, um, I just want to say that this is not our uh, feeble attempt at trying to become famous as a church. It is our attempt at pointing to him so he is famous, okay? Yeah. One thing we have going for us here is that we surround ourselves around, we wrap ourselves around the presence of God. He is king. Jesus is king. And so where he's exalted, he draws men to himself, right? He draws mankind to himself. And so, you know, our purpose and our intention is to give him glory, to point to him so he is known and he's made famous in the earth. Therefore, that's why I'm showing you how to share on Come Facebook because we have a great community here where we care about the king and the kingdom and his presence and all of that. Yeah? Yeah. When you go to a good restaurant, do you tell people about it? it you should. Turtle Leaf, it's a great restaurant. You should go there. That salad, that fruity greens. No, you tell people about it. When you go to a good church, you should tell people about it. Because God's good. Okay, so anyway. Hi, Bill Vanderbush. Here we go. <clears throat> Is he on? Yeah, he's watching live. Right so 
quick tutorial. If you have uh, Facebook, you could put it on your phone. If you don't have the app, get the Facebook app for your phone. If you have it on your phone already, there is a, you just open Facebook. There's a little, when you look at it, there's a little, um, uh, what's that called? Magnifying glass in the top right corner. Little Push that little button. button. It's a yeah. search button. You type in Journey Church. The local chat. Sherry just sh shared it. Just You'll see our little arrows, right? Our little uh, logo. Click on that. And then once you want, you're on that, you just scroll down a smidge. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Scroll. Yes. And you will see. It should be. It should be. Yeah. You'll see right there where it says live. You see the little screen where it says live and you see Scott moving. Oh, now you see me. See me? Hi. You push that. Push the little white part, I think. Come on, you. Yep. And look, there it is, right? So once you have that up, down in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a little button that says share. You push that because you are going to share it. And then you can put a little comment where it says write post. You could say... Love you. It's Katie Baggerly. Just wanted. Love you. <laughs> and then you write love you. You write whatever, and you hit post, and then it's on there. And then you shut it off so you can listen to the message yourself live without this. But then everybody else who is on Facebook scrolling through and getting their thumbs all out of whack, um, they get to see what's happening. Why is this important, Adam Bunce? Why is this important? How many friends do you have on Facebook? 5,000. I've got 12. <laughs> so, Jalissa, how many do you have? You don't know? Take a guess. I mean, I know you got Adam next to you, you know, King Stud over there, 5,000, but what? 3,000? So those two people, they share it. 8,000 people get an opportunity to see what's going on here. Just so you guys know, every single week without anyone sharing it, there's anywhere from 700 to 900 people that watch what goes on here. How, how, listen, it's not about us being made famous, but it's about making him famous. And, 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 and listen, if you have a difficult time, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, face to face with people, maybe sharing what you have experienced with other people may help them to have an opportunity. I just want to say this. Those little stupid little three-minute to five-minute amazing videos that I do in the morning on Facebook, there's people all over the country that have sent reports back that that's something that they needed to hear. There's something. Now, the enemy would like to use it for bad intentions. How many know that everything the enemy tries to do, God wants to turn into something good? Why not saturate the airways with God's presence and hopefulness and goodness rather than saturating it with a whole bunch of gossip yeah. and crap? Just a thought. So thank you. And so for just, just for whatever, if you could, every time you see our team post something uh, for Journey Church or for iMatter, just share it and watch what happens. It, it literally will affect thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. How many know we're supposed to be effective? Yep. Yeah, we are. We are. So let's get started today talking about kingdom fathers. And wow, I'm just feeling like I got to do this. Jeepers. I want to apologize as a father for every father that has been inappropriate, that has not represented the father well, for every time that they didn't make the mark, for every time that they fell down, for every time that they hurt you. Because see, the enemy's intention is to keep you from something so amazing of a father's love, that he will, he will use lesser than the father's love to keep you from it. And I know that there's been husbands that have hurt you wives. I know that there's been dads that have hurt you sons and daughters. I, I know there's been pastors that, not me, but there's been pastors that have, that have done things to abuse you or to hurt you. You know, there's different types of abuse, and I just want, I want to speak to the Father. I just ask for spiritual abuse to be healed now in Jesus' name. Father, I ask for mental abuse to be healed, verbal abuse to be healed, sexual abuse 
to be healed. Father, wherever there has been anything that has been less than who you are, we just ask that those things would be healed, Father, and that the true Father's heart would go forth and that healing bomb would go forth and your attributes would go forth and displace everything that was meant to hurt these individuals. In Jesus' name, let healing begin emotionally, spiritually, physically, relationally, in every way, God. Let us think different today because we do have a good, good, good father, a good father, a good father. I did want to talk about the building. I'll go fast. This week we had, um, wow, wow. Um, we had fathers of our community, um, our code enforcement. There was three of the guys that came that really, they're, they're very powerful people. I don't know if you guys have dealt with code enforcement and things like that, but they, very, they make a lot of strong, heavy decisions for the sake of protecting us. You know, they, they really want things done right. Uh, they want things done to code. Obviously, there's codes for reasons. Why? Because it creates a safe and healthy environment. But, 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 they're brilliant at it, and when you're building something, you're learning at it. Does that, you know, and I'm finding even like the best architects and engineers are still keeping up with the codes. Every time you think you got the code, well, it was 2013 code, and then there's a 2015 code, oh, and then they had a 2017 code, and oh, by the way, two months ago, there's a 2019 code. <laughs> so you have to keep up with what, right? So they come in, they come in here, they meet with us, hey, we want to meet with you guys, and, and, and they walked in, and the first thing they said was, they said, well, none of, none of your church is to print, to, to, to the prints that you submitted to us. I said, well, what prints do you have? I said, well, they go, they were two years old. I go, well, the code changed. <laughs> get it? It was, like, anyway, it was, a, it was a joke. Um, so I, I had to get them the up-to-date, as-built um, prints because our old prints had that all being steel studs, metal studs, and concrete. Well, now it's all wood. The old one didn't have a sprinkler system. The new one does. I just want, I want, to, I want to tie this in, okay? I want to tie this into something here. You may have been something, but he's building something in you, and you need to be recognized by what's currently being built, not by what was built. Okay? So they walked in, and all they said was this. They were here with us for about 15 minutes, and they, and, and, and they, they looked at the, they were here to judge the framing, which this man right here was in, responsible for, by the way. So, amen. He did a horrible job. What are you talking about? No, I'm just playing. So, so but, but Rudy came in and, and helped us get it. And, and here's what was amazing, Rudy. You know how they judged your, your framing? By looking at the floor. It was amazing to me that the first thing they noticed was, how do you guys do anything here? And what they saw was the place was clean. Now, because the place was clean, they had a lot more favorable eyes on everything that he did. Not that he didn't do it well. because They looked at the frame and they said, this place is pristine and so well taken care of. I'd like to propose to you dads, you may not be the best framer. You may not be the best builder. You may not have the, all, all, everything together. But let me just say something to you. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, even if it's just stinking clean in the floor. Because it matters. Because how you do anything is how you will do everything in your life. Pay attention to those little things. Be faithful to those little things. You may not be the best dad ever, but you're a dad, and you're a dad that got placed in that position to father those kids. You just be your best you can be because guess what? He favors those. He, he will allow you to grow in favor and blessing. Why? By being faithful to the little things that he asked you to do. Every nail counted, man. You know, and he, he noticed that, listen, there's not stuff all over the floor. We took care of stuff. And how you take care of stuff, it will flow into everything that you do. That was, I'm kind of tying the fatherhood thing into that. So they said, well done. Then the bank comes in with three people from the bank, the vice president, the CCO, the chief credit officer, and a loan officer came in to evaluate our situation. We're supposed to be done with a certificate of occupancy by the end of this month. Has anybody been in the building? We can be in there, but not legally. They came in. Our management team showed up in droves at a meeting at 1130 in the morning. They took off of work to be here. I think we had 
eight or nine maybe of our management team sitting around a table to meet with three of them. I got a phone call from the vice president of the bank on Friday, and she said that her team was so, she was, it was funny, I knew she, was, she wasn't even at the bank, she was at her vacation home, and she's cooking breakfast when she calls me, and she says, it's kind of fun, I'm like, like, like what are you doing, Tammy? I'm just fixing breakfast, we're at the lake, and I just, but I wanted to call you and tell you something. She goes, first of all, I want to say thank you. I go, thank you? She goes, you guys are trustworthy. She said, I just want to say thank you because you're doing a great job on your building. She goes, I wanted to say thank you because I, we could not believe we were so impressed with the buy-in of your leadership at your church with regards to this project for our community. And I wanted to say thank you. And, I, and again, the code enforcer said the same thing. We're looking forward to what this place will do for our community. We think it's going to be a great thing. So that came from both, both voices. But this is, this is how they... This is how they See, being thankful isn't just in words, it's, in, it's, it's actually in actions. This is what they said to us. We want to remove the pressure from your church. We want to take the pressure off from your church. We know the weight that you're under to try to get this thing done in, a, in the fashion that we agreed to. But we want to tell you that we're doing a modification as of Tuesday. You don't have to be finished by the end of June. You take your time. We're going to give you to the end of the year to finish this project. So... So, so, so we, 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 get, we get to do it without having to go into more debt. We get to do it without having to put pressure on our people for finances. We get to do it without putting pressure on our, 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 our people that serve, you know. <laughs> but you know why, Stinking? It's so funny. Where are, Marta, where are you? Come here, stand up, would you? Just stand up, just for a minute. I know, I'm just going to blow you completely up right now. <laughs> She said to me, she goes, she goes, this personnel manual took me longer than my, all, both my pregnancies together. Like to do, like, but she, but you know what, Marta, I'm, I'm not going to blow up your age, but you're, you know, you're, you're more than 50. Yeah. So she's more than 21. And, uh, and uh, she's, she's grandmother and, and she raised Sean, that by herself, you know, that's more than a pregnancy too. Um, and so... But see, but see, but see, you, you, you not, you not only were a great mom, you were great, you, you, you fathered him well too, and I know that because you passed him off to me, and and you did a better job than me. But I'm learning from you how to do that, right? And so, and so, right, right, we do it together, right? But, but the, here's the thing: is you know, Marta, uh, Saturday after Saturday after Saturday after Saturday, Marta's out there cleaning up the building. With your buddy. Yeah, we had lots of buddies. There were buddies. But I'm just saying, what, what I'm saying is the things that really, the thing that, that spoke volumes to code enforcement and it spoke volumes to the bank. But we have, we have rock stars all around here. Tim Horan, Tim Horan's 80 years old and he still beats me up. I mean, it's just like, he's amazing. It's just like he is so, we have so many amazing men and women. I just wanted to take a moment to celebrate all of you. So could you just honor each other and say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We've had more volunteers show up on Saturdays since we said we don't want volunteers to show up anymore on Saturdays. But you know what that says? I, 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 Dave Aldridge called me yesterday. We got these guys here. Exactly. Our electricians are coming out in droves. We're going to be putting in HVAC. Oh, and guess what's going on the wall on Monday? Sheetrock. Yay, it's good stuff. All right, enough of that. Let's, go, let's get down to the, the Father's Day stuff. 15 minutes or more. <laughs> I can't help it. Sorry, excuse me. There's no one. You guys stand up. No, both of you. Father, I'm just grateful. I'm thankful. For sons, I'm thankful, God, that you're raising up those that will raise up. Voices of influence, overwhelm them, Father, with your love. In Jesus' name. Wow. Okay, now I can, now let's go. Now we'll go. We'll go, we'll go, we'll go for this. Why are fathers important? Why do we need fathers? Well, because we need family. And... Here's the deal. We're not a church. We're not an event. 
We're not a thinking gathering. We're a family. And the thing is so hard to obtain is family status. It's like, it's like the thing we want most is the most elusive thing. Why? Because family costs everything. But the value of what family produces is his kingdom will come. His will will be done. Why? When we become family. It is the most elusive, difficult thing, but it is the most valuable thing and worthwhile thing to pursue. It is. And fathers, fathers in this house, fathers in your homes, you are key to this place becoming a family. Why? You're going to have lots of teachers. You're going to have lots of preachers. You're going to have lots of apostles and prophets and pastors and evangelists and healers and all that. But you'll have few who will be willing to father. And the difference is this. A father never leaves. He never abandons. He never walks away. A true father is with you always. Though he may confront you, he will stay with you until you become all that you're supposed to be. That's why we need dads. We need legitimate dads who look like their father. This culture, everything gets better if the fathers in this culture rise up and take their place of protection and covering and sourcing to all of those that they're fathering. It is true. So what's the father look like? He's loving. He's loving. Very first thing is, look with wonder at the depth of the father's marvelous love that he has lavished on us. He has called us and made us his very own beloved children. The reason the world doesn't recognize who we are is that they didn't recognize who he is, but the reason that they don't recognize who we are is because they haven't seen him legitimately. The church has been really good at judging people. The church has not been really good at loving people. And I will tell you this, if you love God, you'll have no problem loving people because that love flows through you. Here's the best way you can tell whether you love God. How you're treating your family. How you're treating those around you. How you're treating those you don't know. Because when we love God, the best way to love God is to love his kids. Number two, he's kind. This is my best trait right here. By faith, I'm declaring that's my best trait right there. So throughout the coming ages, we will be visible. We will be the, say this, I will be the visible display of the infinite, limitless riches of his grace and his kindness, which was showered upon us in Jesus Christ. I'm going to be the visible. It is. That's who we're going to be. I'm going to be that person. I'm going to be, you're going to be able to see him because you're going to see him in me. He's compassionate. Lord, you're so kind. You're so tenderhearted to those that don't deserve it. Woo. Wow. And you're so patient with people who fail you. Everybody just do this for a minute, will you? Yes. Right? That's us. He's so patient. We don't deserve it. He's so tenderhearted, and he's so patient with people who fail him. Yet your love is like flooding river overflowing its banks with what? With kindness. Lord, let that be so true in all of our experiences. For this, he's giving. For this is how much God loved the world, that he gave his one and only unique son as a gift. So now everyone, say everyone, Everyone who believes in him will never perish but experience everlasting life. You will know whether or not that you've accepted him because everlasting life doesn't happen when you die. It happens when you're born again. Everlasting life begins right now. I just can't wait to get to heaven. No, 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 let's not wait to go to heaven. That's a destination. Let's actually bring heaven to earth. That's what our portion actually is. Everlasting life begins with those who actually know, are intimate with, the one true God. This father's faithful. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Somebody sing a song for me (laughs) right now. Because of great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new when? Every morning. Great is your faithfulness. That has to be our declaration. Great is your faith. You're faithful. I don't know how you're working things out. I don't know how you're doing this thing. I don't know how you're building that place. I don't know how you're building stuff in me, but you're faithful. Why? Faithful means you never quit. You're merciful. But God still loved us with such great love 
He is so rich in compassion and mercy. Now, when you're reading these things, read this about you. Because this is who you are. I think sometimes we forget who we are. So we behave differently. This is who we are. God, you so loved us when you had such a great love. You're so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. None of us deserved it and all of us got it. Strong. How many are glad that you serve a father, a, that your dad is a strong dad? Yeah. Levi is extremely, extremely grateful for that. If you know Levi, Kurt, Kurt will tell you that every single day, Levi and I measure each other. He stands up next to me and goes, hey, mom, mom, am I t- who's taller? Who's taller? Who's taller? And now, you know what? And I'm all right with that. Now, Nate, my other boy, is six foot three. Levi ain't ever going there, I don't think. But, but he's stretching for that. He's, he lets his hair grow on the top. Anything he can do, anything he can do, just get that one inch. But... But, but, but watch this. This is the God that we serve. You ask, who is this king of glory? Who is this glory king? The Lord, armed and ready. He's ready for battle. He's the mighty one. He's the invincible one in every single way. He can't be taken out. What a dad to have. How confident would you be walking beside that dad? Whew. He's forgiving. But if we freely admit our sins when his light uncovers them, he will be faithful to forgive us every, how many times? <laughs> God is, is just to forgive us our sins. Why? Because of his son. And he will continue, watch this, he'll continue, watch this, he'll continue, watch this, to cleanse us from all. Come on, man, that is really good news. Every bit of, any, any junk that wants to weigh us down, no, I got you. Anything we've done in the past, no, I've got you. Anything you're going through right now, no, I got you. And I got you tomorrow, too. I'm still going to be faithful. Whoo! Holy Spirit shows up. He wrecks you in a good way. You get, a, you get, a, you get just, a, a, just lavished in his love. Holy Spirit goes, see, Dad? I'm telling you, Dad. Look at they loving you, Dad. Look at Jesus. Oh, look at all, what all of the Godhead has released. Why? Because he never leaves us. Never forsakes us. He's with us always. And he's, can everybody just say this one? He's good. Let, oh, Jane. Can everybody just go with Jane, Jane, Jane? <laughs> Let everyone thank God. Can we just do that? Can we just break out right now? Can we just break out? Lord, we thank you. We bless you, God. We bless you. We bless you. Let everyone thank you, God. Let everyone thank you, God. Why? Because you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Oh, and I love this. I love this. I love this. God, you are easy to please. He's easy to please. Somebody tell me that every day. God's easy to please. He's easy to please. Why is he easy to please? Because he adores you. You can look goofy, and you please him. Well, you don't look goofy. That'd be me. But you you see what I'm saying? It's easy to please. His tender love for us continues for a while. His tender love what? Listen, listen. How many, when you know your love, you have some hope? And how many, when you have some hope, you can move mountains? The enemy wants you to know that you're not loved. The enemy wants them to think that they're not loved. The enemy wants to destroy every family because you think you're not loved because people have forgotten to be loved so that they can love. If you're not loving, take the weight off today. Don't worry about loving more. Learning about, be worried about being loved more because when you're loved more, you will love more. It's true. He's righteous. You listen, you can have all the opinions in the world, but he's right. Isn't that good to know? He's righteous. He stands there right. You are fair and you're righteous in almost everything you do. No, everything you do. And your love is wrapped in almost all of your works. No, it's in all of it. Everything he does is wrapped in love. He's caring. Look at all the birds. We have more birds living in our church right now over there than we actually have people. Am I right, Joe? 
Am I right? When Joe put some pictures out, look at the new life is springing up. We got babies being born in there. Chirp, 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 chirp. <laughs> Matt takes the gun and starts shooting. The, the nail gun starts shooting at him. No, just. <laughs> Where you, am I right, Kurt? Am I, I mean, just. It's a, uh. then, and then, of course, he blames Kurt for doing it, and then Debbie gets mad at Kurt. It's a whole large story. So. So, so listen, but the birds, look, they don't plant, they don't reap, they don't store up food, yet Heavenly Father provides them with their food. Aren't you much more valuable? Can we just get that settled? We're valuable. We are important to him. He's a good shepherd. The Lord is my, say this with me, the Lord is my best friend. Say it with me, just say it. The Lord is my best friend, and he's my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, to a quiet brook of bliss. Isn't that a great place to live right there? He's ever present, dads. That's one of the best things you can ever do for your family. Be present. God, you're such a safe, healthy, and powerful place to find refuge. You're a proven help in time of trouble. More than enough and always available Whenever I need you. That's the heart of the Father right there. He's a refuge where you can sit in the throne under the shadow of, his, of Shaddai. That you are hidden in the strength of, of God Most High. He's the hope that holds me. The stronghold that shelters me. He's the only God. He's the only God. There's no one like our God. you got to get that settled. There's nothing else that will satisfy. There's no one else you can run to. This is a place of refuge that you can go to. Everything else tries to replace him, but no one ever can be like our God. It's just true. And out of that, I get great confidence knowing that I'm his and that he's mine. He's gracious. He was so kind, so he'll be kind. He was so gracious, so he'll be gracious. Why? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he got me through one thing, he'll get me through another thing. Because of his passion towards me, he has made everything right and has restored me. That won't change tomorrow, next week, or next year. He will still make everything right. Yeah, but it seems so crazy right now. It seems so crazy right now. It seems so upside down right now. You can't live in what is. You've got to live in what he's about to do because breakthrough only comes to them that are willing to move through what is into that which is breakthrough for tomorrow because tomorrow there's brand new mercy and there's brand new grace. Tomorrow when you wake up, though it's the darkest time right now, joy comes in the morning. And with such great love, with such great love, you can turn the page of a day, and tomorrow becomes your brand new day. But don't quit, don't give up, stay in love, stay in patience, stay in kindness, because that's the way of our Father, and He is the best Jedi ever. A Father is a healer. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord, here's the part of healing, guys, you gotta pay attention to what the doctor tells you to do. Did you hear me? Some people keep finding themselves in unhealthy situations. Well, stop doing over and over again what you've been told not to do. Right. Yeah. See, a father knows how to, listen, son, the reason you're still experiencing, I don't know why I'm so tired every day, Dad. Well, maybe you should stop playing Nintendo until 3.30 in the morning. I don't even see Levi around, is he? Oh, where's Ben? Oh, there's Ben. Yeah, there's Ben. Ben's at my house, too, I know. And, and I asked you at night, I asked the next morning, what game were you guys playing last night? And Ben goes, well, we weren't playing a game. I was watching a war movie. Did I just blow you in, Ben? Was that? Oh, okay. So listen, sometimes, listen. We got to listen so we can actually do what's right in his eyes, not in our eyes. We got to pay attention to his commands and, and keep his degrees. And, and watch this. Out of this, he actually brings healing to us. Listen, here's the prescription. Take it. How many people go to counseling and don't do their counsel? How many take financial classes and then don't do it? How many come to church every week and be hearers of the Lord but not doers? We just got to start doing. That's all. It's really simple. And this stuff comes to us. He's powerful. Your, yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory 
and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head, the source, the, the, the covering of all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and to give strength to a few of us. He gives strength to all. He's the one who saves. The Lord, your God, is with you. The mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. And his, in his love, he will, be no, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Some of you today need to step out of the rebuke and step into the rejoicing. You need to step out of the rebuke towards your children, or you need to step out of the rebuke towards you and step into the singing all around. What a delightful thing to come out of that mindset into something that actually is rejoicing over you. Can I just tell you something about guys? We're kind of like Labradors. La Labradors. We'll do anything for food. We will. Guys are like that. We'll just do anything for food. But let me just say this. Listen, our Labrador moves towards everything we praise her for. I would like to propose to you that the things that are praiseworthy that you speak and you call out, or that you declare over people, move them towards who they really are rather than dealing with what they're not. You tuned yet? Okay, Dave's getting tuned up. We're gonna rock here in a minute. He's our helper, so don't be afraid. He's with you. Don't be dismayed. I'm your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know why? Because God, I want to make all things new. He's seated on the throne. He said, I am making everything new. I'm making everything new. Yeah, but look at my life, God. I'm making everything new. Yeah, but look at my past, God. I'm making everything new. I'm worried about my future. I don't know what's coming. I'm making everything new. Then he said, write this down. Why can I write this down? Because my words are trustworthy and they are true. His heart, it's for you. All of his promises, they're true. When the, when the hearts of the fathers begin to turn towards the sons and daughters in this way, they're coming home. Yeah. They will come home. Yeah. They'll come home to a safe, healthy place. When we emulate God, they're coming home. If Jesus be lifted up, he'll draw all men and women unto himself. That's what works. What's our next steps? Dads? You may have lost connection with your kids. Make connection with them. It's gonna take dads initiating this. The spirit of Elijah that it talks about here in this book is like where the prophet says this, but also look ahead. I'm sending Elijah the prophet to clear the way of, for the big day of God, the decisive judgment day. He will convince parents to look after their children and children to look up to their parents. I wanna, I wanna just tell you this. The children aren't going to look up to you until you look after them. We've got to go first. Well, they, yeah, but I'm disconnected. Well, then make a connection. Well, they don't want to be with me. Well, then want to be with them. Well, they're not very nice to me right now. Well, you be nice to them. I don't think they love me anymore. Well, then you love them. It starts with us. And our responsibility is, is to overwhelm them with the very thing that compels them to change their minds, the same as God does with us. It's called kindness and love. I, I tried that one, one time and it didn't work. It says overwhelm them with kindness and love. It's relentless in all that it does. Have those hard conversations. But let the hard conversations first start with you. Towards you. Towards you. Towards you. Listen. Be a son before you're a father. Learn from your children so you can actually bring them to a higher place. And this is the beautiful thing. For the Father's discipline comes only from His passionate love and pleasure for you. Even when it seems like its correction is harsh, it's still better than any father on earth gives. Let me just ask, let me just ask this. If you're going to be a father and you're going to bring correction, bring it from heaven, not from earth. Don't react out of anger. Have a response that comes from heaven. Make sense? Okay. Point number three is this have their destiny in mind. Dedicate your children to God and point them in the way that they should go and the, and the values that they've learned from you will be with them for life. I would like to propose to you that your kids are learning from you whether you think they are or not and they're learning the good stuff and they're learning the bad stuff. We want them to learn the valuable stuff so Father, see first in us 
any error in our ways. Renew in me a clean heart, God. Would you demonstrate yourself in me so you can demonstrate yourself through me? Let there be nothing found in my heart that isn't your heart. Let there be no thought in my head that's not your thought. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, oh God, I pray. Now that just flowed out of me because my grandpa and my grandma at every dinner that we ever had together drinking ice cold water out of steel cups. He would say that over us every time. And and may the meditation of of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. (laughs) I don't think about that often, but that just came in that moment. Let me just tell you something. What you do consistently, routinely, daily, those little nuggets that you're putting into your kid's life, they won't leave it. They will come back to it. And by the way, I don't care if you're an evangelist, a pastor, I don't care if you're a millionaire, let your kids be who your kids are, who yeah. God designed them, designed them to be because they are unique, unique, unique people. And even though Philip was an evangelist who was seven of the deacons, he also first saw himself as a father of four unmarried daughters who prophesied and he recognized their gift and he called their gift forth. Find out who your kids are and help them to develop into their very unique expression, yeah. who they really are, who God designed them to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Best day ever. Best dad ever. That's who you are. Let's stand together. Father, I just pray. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, do the work that you want to do in us. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to adjust us. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to have your way in us. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to redeem, to restore what the enemy has stolen. And Father, I declare over every parent in this place, that they would be godly parents, that they would awaken to who they really are, that they carry your DNA, that we look just like you so we can remember how to act because we will act accordingly to our image. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love you guys so, so much. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Tony.